Hi everybody, my name is Doug Wilson and this is Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. So we got another knife video. This one's going to be a quasi show me review of, happens to be right here, the Cold Steel Colossus designed by Mike Wallace at Wallace Edged Tools. For those of you who don't know, Mike Wallace and his partner at their shop design and build all of the prototypes for cold steel. So an idea is thought up, they build the knife. A lot of times they think up the designs, they come up with the designs and they build the prototypes or uh, somebody else does, Lim Thompson or whatever, he'll, he'll come up with a design. But those guys are the ones who build it, right? So, this was given to me by Mike Wallace, the designer. And I want to show it. And here's the reason. There's only one reason I want to show this blade. Well, two. It's cool as hell, right? <laughs> And it's tough as hell. You all know I'm not much of a folder guy, right? But this is a woods-worthy folder. If you want to see more of it, stay tuned. And I'm going to work with this knife and tell you a little bit about it. We'll be right back. Okay, so here she is, the Cold Steel Colossus, designed and the prototype built by Mike Wallace. I'm sure Andrew Demko helped him, or the other way around. I don't know what happens at the shop. I've been to Mike Wallace's shop. Matter of fact, this knife right here, when I went to his shop, I just... I tell you, when I uh, want to work with a knife maker, right, whether I'm putting sheaths on his knives or whether he's building knives for me or whatever, right, or it's a collaboration, if he's close enough, I like to go to his shop and check it out, right? So Mike Wallace is about, I don't know, four hours away from me. So I took a road trip. Road trip, right? And while I was there, I, I spent the whole day in his shop. Um, and he went through every aspect of what he does. He treats everything, okay? I trust the guy. I can't say that about a lot of knife makers because I just don't know him. But this guy, I trust, okay? So, he built this for me while I was there, right? From scratch. Like, it started out as a piece of steel and some G10 slabs and he built me a necker, okay? I carry this necker a lot, CPM 154, badass steel. Okay, so let's get back to the Colossus. There's one main reason that I want to review or show you this knife or recommend it or whatever, okay? I wouldn't be showing it if I didn't like it, okay? It's a badass strong folder. You don't see that a lot, right? There are badass strong folders on the market. I realize that. Most of them are pretty damn expensive. This one is not, although it's, it's a little pricey. Uh, you know, without really knowing exactly, I've seen different prices. I'm gonna say a mid-range of 150, 160 for this blade, right? It is designed to utilize CTS XHP steel, which is basically, how can I put it? A stainless D2, a more stainless D2 steel. It's comparable to D2, might be a little, you know, tweaked up a little higher than D2, 
but comparable to D2, but more stainless, okay? It is a stainless steel, so it will not rust. Having said that, you leave it, you know, buried in the ground for five years, probably gonna rust, <laughs> okay? Uh, a lot of stainless steels will rust if given enough, you know, time in the elements. Anyway, give you a good look at the knife. It's made with their triad locking system, right? Which is touted to be one of, if not the strongest locking mechanism on the market. Uh, like I said, I'm not comparing this to other knives. This is a standalone review on its own merits. It's a strong knife and it's woods worthy or I wouldn't show it. G10 scales, you can see that handle geometry, you see the blade geometry, it's a, a leaflet style spear tie, spearish point ish ish, <laughs> right? Lend itself to be a good skinner, I'm sure, although I haven't skinned with it, right? Nothing to skin. Again, triad locking system, a little bit of thumb jimping, not too aggressive, right? I like it because this is a blade that I can, if I want, use in the bush. I'm going to do things with this knife that you wouldn't do with most other folders. I'm going to baton with it, right? Things like that. Now, if you are not a Cold Steel fan for any reason, feel free to be closed-minded and take a hike, right? But if you want to stick around and check it out, then let's work with it a little bit, see what it can do, right? Um, I'm even going to chop a little bit with it. Hmm, imagine that, right? Okay, so hmm. comfortable's really, uh, the handle's really comfortable, right? Really comfortable. Got a nice little choke up choil here, right? Which lends itself well to thumb pushes and whatnot, right? Just the further up you can get your hand on that blade, the more control you have over it. Small whittling task, you can even hold it this way, right? Use it as a draw knife type style, right? Okay, so let's uh, let's play with it. Damn, I gotta stand up. Shit. Okay, so I'm gonna choke up. Do a little feather sticking with it. Now I already know that this knife, what it can do, because I've been working with it now for about six months. And that's what I like to do with a new knife. I like to really work with it off camera so I know exactly what this knife can do and I'm comfortable with saying what I'm saying about this knife. If I wasn't, I wouldn't say it. It is a strong, woodsworthy folder. Is it a fixed blade knife? No, it is not. But it's a very strong folder. <clears throat> that can take quite a bit of folder abuse. I mean, that's, there's, there's some cool feathers there, right? The feather sticks very well. And you know, if it's great for butch crafting tasks, I like it right away. <clears throat> Okay, so feather sticks well. It's got a great secondary edge on it. It's got a flat grind, which is a hell of a slicer. Flat grinds make great slicers, okay? The fact that it has a secondary edge bevel means it has a stronger edge on it rather than, I don't know anybody that flat grinds to a zero degree bevel. It just, it's just not a good idea to do. It's too thin. The edge would be too thin. Put a secondary edge on a flat grind, you're good to go. 
that's what this one has 90 degree spine right so I use that choke up choil again right scrape some bark with it All right, get enough of that in a pile, it'll strike with a ferro rod. It should. Uh, this, this, I tell you what, this wood is damp. So it's been out here for a few days. It rained a couple of days ago. So I don't know how much ferro rod action I'm going to get out of this wood, but um, maybe I'll try for a. Dryer piece. All right. Let's see what we got. Got a little bit there. Let me take this off. I'm going to use my flip out ferro rod and I'm going to use the Colossus as the striker. There you go. All right, good, strong, 90 degree spine. All right, wood stamp. Right, let me clean that off a little bit. Flip this back around, All right? Put it back on my neck. All right, so a little bit more feather sticking. I always need practice feather sticking, so I don't mind practicing. All right, so there's that. All right, uh, let's baton a little bit with it. All right, baton a little bit with it. And yes, this knife can handle batoning. Even fairly large pieces of wood. I've done it. You don't want to go too big with it, right? Um, why push it if you don't have to? But if you need to have it done, it'll do it. That's going through a knot right now. <laughs> I'm beating pretty hard on this. All right. I guess the center of this uh, stump is getting rot rotted out. Okay. All right, so I'm chop a little bit with it. Okay, now. I'm not going to say it's designed for chopping, but I know you can chop with it too. You don't want to go too hard, but if you have to chop with this blade, it'll do it. Now it clearly states on the box that you should not do this kind of stuff with this blade, okay? But I'm confident in that triad locking system, okay? I'm confident in it. Yep. 
Now you can choke back, right? Get a little wrist action with it. Us old guys, we know about wrist action. <laughs> Us single old guys, anyway. All right, a little bit of chopping. This is a piece of hardwood. I don't know what kind. If I had to guess, I'd say oak. It's pretty gnarly. All right, so what I do, if I'm chopping wood and I'm chopping it to cut the wood in half, I'll get to a certain point and then instead of wasting all that energy <clears throat> I'll just put it against the stump not ready yet so let's chop a little bit more imagine that Hanging pretty hard on this wood. Let's see if that's enough to break it. Usually you want to chop about halfway through. I wasn't halfway through though. So let's see what we got here. There it is. Okay. Uh, let's see if I find another baton. Let's see if it'll baton this piece of oak with the knots in it. Oh, oh, oh. All right, and the the, the uh, triad locking system is a tight, you know, system. Um, folding blades are always going to have a little bit of play. Even the quality blades, you know, the quality folders, the really strong folders like this one, right? It's always going to have a little bit of play because there's a fulcrum here, right? There is a a joining point here with mechanism in it right but no more play than it had when it was brand new and like I said I've been working with this knife for about six months off and on using it in the field <laughs> I really like it as a backup folder I keep it in this pouch in my Donald Gamber bear pouch it's a great knife Like I said, if you're regular to this channel, I'm not a huge folder guy. I just don't think they're strong enough, especially for field use. Um, and if I'm going to carry a knife, I, you know, Murphy's Law, I want it to be the strongest knife I can possibly carry, right? Uh, given that particular situation. This is a folder that I carry and wood carry right that's a piece of oak it will easily baton you know inch and a half two inch pieces of wood right now I have to I have to reiterate okay I'm only doing this kind of stuff with this knife to show you that it can do it. It is tough enough to do these kind of tasks repeatedly, okay? I do not advocate you buying this knife as a primary survival knife or a primary bush tool or a primary bush crafting uh, knife, right? Or a wood lure knife. But if you're looking for a strong folder to carry that's a little beefier, right? This thing's beefy. It's uh, I don't know, a manly. That's a manly lock blade, right? A manly folder, right? That can do a variety of tasks that other folders may not be able to do, like skinning. Okay, that's a skinning blade all day long. 
okay uh, this um, CTS XHP steel holds a phenomenal edge Rockwell's up there around 60 61 um, if you go smacking um, really hard stuff with this it could chip okay the steel is a little bit brittle okay but normal everyday this kind of stuff all day long right holds a keen edge I have not sharpened this since I since I uh, was gifted it by Mike Wallace I haven't sharpened it yet right now it's not hair shaving sharp I don't think let's see it is right it's hair shaving sharp still after six months of using this blade okay I, I tell you I can't say enough about this blade you know multiple hand holes multiple purchase uh, positions got a ambidextrous clip uh, I don't care about the clip right um, but if you want to put it in your pocket the clips a good handy item to have right very comfortable got a lot of different shave outs here um, contoured to you know your fingers I love that choke up choil it's a, it's a modest choil but it works right and it's at the fattest part of the blade too which gives you tremendous purchase for choking up right look at it look at that right I mean that's like that knife is like part of my hand now I love that I love it Mike Wallace is a great knife designer he knows how to design a comfortable bomb proof outdoors blade right and he knows the steels to use okay so check it out the Colossus by Cold Steel and uh, I know I can't say much more about this knife I really can't it's um it's incredible it's incredible man it's incredible It's incredible. <laughs> Let's get a piece of this, right? See if we can't. Need some good tinder, right? This is uh, this is white birch that I'm using right here. You can tell I don't use this technique that often, right? Um, I'd rather just, you know, do that. <laughs> okay, so there it is. Uh, let's see what we got here. I'm giving this a fairly thorough once over, okay? Fairly thorough once over. I'm giving it a thorough once over, mate. Oh, look at that. Look at that, mate. A figure seven notch. Figure seven. A little log cabin. Get some log cabin action going here. try to hammer through this piece of wood in a second <laughs> right oh, I'm gonna push it for a lock for a lock blade you know for a folder I'm gonna push it oh incredible incredible uh, let's see here yeah why not Let's try to let's try to hammer through it okay I don't know if my, t my baton will can handle it <laughs> okay <coughs> I'm convinced I 
I love this knife. I like working with it. I like the way it looks. I like the way it feels. I like the purchase that you get on it. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. It's incredible, man. It's, uh, I tell you, it's like um, 50 degrees in Pennsylvania right now. I love it. Like May and 50 degrees. Yoo-hoo! I, I tell you, if I didn't have so much work in the shop, it's Friday, I'd be going backpacking. I would. It, it's supposed to be like rainy, overcast all weekend, and I love that kind of weather. like that that's a hell of a knife okay um, I tell you what I should do is sharpen it again because um, it's not quite as sharp as it was brand new but it's not bad for six months okay let's show the uh, me clean off the edge right and let's show the edge I don't know if you can see it okay let's show the edge it's got a sharpening choil in there so you can you can sharpen the entire blade if you want okay now Mike's got it ground to an eighth inch or so up but I'm sure if you wanted to you could put a full edge on that if you wanted to okay because of the sharpening choil. I'm sure there's a reason he did it because this comes down a little fur farther, right? So he started the the uh, the edge bevel over here a little bit, okay? I'm sure there's a reason he did that. Nice lanyard hole in the back. Uh, this is green and black G10 scales. All right, guys. I'm impressed with the Cold Steel Colossus. I am. For a folder, and I'm not a big folder guy, I always say that, right? Because I'm not. I like it. This is a folder I carry. All right, guys, that's it. It's Doug Wilson, BL Hawk Customs Outdoors. Thanks for watching again. Please like, share, subscribe, and tell all your friends. Join the click. C L Y H. C K the click talk it up right brotherhood all that neat stuff all right guys I'll see you on the next video thanks for watching